Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, 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 we got the uh, Iranians or Iran hitting back at uh, certain claims of Israel's self-defense argument uh, by saying that actually Palestinians are acting in self-defense. Well, let's see what uh, Iran's argument is, shall we? comes from Reuters, so this is legit. It comes from October 7th, 2023. Iran says attack on Israel is Palestinian, quote-unquote, self-defense. All right, let's see. Iran's foreign ministry said attacks by its ally Hamas on Israel on Saturday were an act of self-defense by Palestinians and called on Muslim countries to support their rights. Palestinian Islamist group Hamas took Israel by surprise with the biggest attack in decades by gunmen who killed pop 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 And I'm quoting, this operation is the spontaneous movement of resistance groups and Palest Palestine's oppressed people in defense of their in inalienable rights and their natural reactions to the Zionists' warmongering and provocative policies. End quote. Iranian state media quoted ministry spokesperson Nasser Kanani as said, and I'm quoting again as saying, I'm quoting, Iran considers that the Zionist occupier regime and its well-known supporters are responsible for the violence and killing against Palestinians and call on Islamic countries to support the right of Palestinian people, Kanani said. Now, Ali Akbar Valayati, a top advisor to Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei, said in a, t in a test testament, yes, in a statement, and I'm quoting, this victorious operation will certainly expedite the collapse of the Zionist regime and promises its imminent annihilation, end quote. The semi-official news agency Fars reported. Well, government spokesperson Ali Bahad Bahadori Jahromi told state media that the attacks, and I'm quoting, Proof that the Zionist regime, regime is more vulnerable than ever and that the initiative is in the hands of the Palestinian youth. End quote. Ya Yahya Rahim Safari, a former Revolutionary Guards commander who is now an advisor to Khamen Khamenei, earlier said, and I'm quoting, We will stand by the Palestinian fighters until the liberation of Palestine and Jerusalem. End quote. State television showed parliament members rising from their seats on Saturday to chant pop, 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 to Israel and Palestine is victorious, Israel will be pop, pop, pop. Okay, well, uh, this is what Iran says. Uh, I don't want to be, uh, you know, too bad, but uh, it's always uh, two sides of, of each and every story. And uh, it's rarely one black and white. Sometimes it's, you know, a bit uh, like that in between or more to the left but it's still something to the right and i said this little uh, story in a video um, a few i don't know i think i said it today or yesterday when i said that when i was a kid i was a crazy kid and i didn't really follow directions and not really i didn't follow directions let's put it straight so i got a lot of beatings from whomever thought that has authority over me the neighbor uh, teacher, the parents, the whomever. That's the way it was in Romania. And since I was a crazy kid, that was the fastest method to calm down the kid for about 35 seconds. <laughs> and another, another beating after that. Poor me. Ah. Anyway, it teaches you uh, certain things, uh, good and bad. So whenever I would get beatings at the beginning, because after a while I realized that it's useless to go and tell my parents about the beatings. But whenever at the beginning, let's say, I, or I would, would get a bigger beating, I would go and tell my parents that, um, I don't know, the neighbor guy beat me or something like this, or the teacher beat me and so on. And my mom used to beat me, so uh, it was no way of uh, really... Blah, blah, blah. But my father always asked me this question. What did you do? And that destroyed the whole thing for me. Because I was waiting for them to say, well, okay, I'm going to go and beat them up or something like that. All right. But my, my thing was like, I was, I got beaten. I mean, my, my father was okay. What did you do? Did you do anything? 
And if I was, obviously, I didn't do anything. But little by little, by asking me questions, he would realize that I was part of the deal, you know, part of the deal. The problem is this, uh, certain things you can control, certain things you cannot control. And, uh, you know, for instance, I was always against someone else beating someone else's kid. Uh, you get the kid and get it to the parent and you say, hey, Gigi, this mofo here, did this, did this, did this. Can you please make sure this kid doesn't do it again? And if you get a negative reaction from the parent, like, then maybe you do something else. But you don't just grab the kid and fuck him up, okay? Like it happened with me. Um, so this is the way it worked. So I'm, I'm saying that uh, in this case, we just uh, say that Israel has the right to def uh, defend itself, self-defense, that's true. Uh, we all, all have a right to defend ourselves, including the Palestinians, if they're attacked or they're mishandled. We should agree with that. Now, to say that I did not do anything to deserve a beating or maybe, you know, something like that, uh, well, or I didn't do anything, maybe not deserve a beating, but if I didn't do anything, I don't think so, because I was doing all kind of pranks and garbage and all that. Uh, childish things, but getting on people's nerves and they didn't have uh, time to, uh, you know, lecture me. Smack, smack, 35 seconds, he's back in business. An idiot again. <laughs> anyway, so the same here. Uh, you see, some people's terrorists are other people's freedom fighters. Uh, I gave another example with uh, Mujahideens in uh, Afghanistan with the Soviets. Those were the freedom fighters from the Soviet perspective, they were terrorists and so on. And um, you can find these kind of examples in, in for instance, in uh, the, um, partisans in Yugoslavia, for instance, or in French, in France, under the occupation of uh, the Germans. They were called partisans, but they were called terrorists. At that time, not terrorists, but saboteurs. So saboteurs are good, not a good thing, but they were the partisans. The, see, different. Now, who was right? Well, if you look at the Germans, these guys were destroying their things. So how am I supposed to call them? And they believed in their uh, ideals. And uh, we're doing this for the good reason. We have to defend this for against the communists. We have to do it. These guys, uh, they declared war against us. Remember, France declared war against Germany, not Germany against France, to, to France. And Great Britain declared war on Germany, not Germany. So Germany invaded Poland but did not declare war to these guys, they declared war. So from one on one, it became a, a war, world war when these guys said, you know what, we're going to attack you now. Okay, now you're involved. So instead of being one on one, now we're going to be what? Three on one. And so on. And then one, and they got uh, the alliances and so on. So uh, both sides believed that they, what they're doing is the right thing. The Germans saw that. And obviously they thought the other ones are wrong and the other ones said yes We are the right side and the other ones are wrong. So yes, it's normal that they call him like that But the right to self-defense could be used by all sides Now let's say I'm just minding my business somewhere, you know, and I'm studying mathematics and someone comes and smacks me tries to beat me up and I have the right to defend myself and I start defending myself so well that I'm overwhelming that guy I'm beating him up now he has the right to defend himself since I'm becoming the guy who's beating him or because he was the initial aggressor then only I am in self-defense and if I let's say commit a murder by beating this guy up so badly he didn't have the right uh, what he was not in self-defense he cannot ever claim self-defense so you see things are on and off and if you go back in time you can go back in time where all these things kind of happened in the Middle East and that started in 1948 when some people decided that we're going to create this country right here. I'm not going to go into it. The fact is they carved it over there and said this is from now on the state of this and that. And that angered and pushed and uh, other people around that were over there, were not over there, whatever you want to take it. So that was the, I don't know, year zero with this idiocracy in Middle East. Uh, who's to blame? I think the method. The method by which they created that thing, I think it was uh, um, not the right time and not the right way to do such a thing. They should have thought of something uh, more flexible, let's put it this way, I have to be mild here. Okay, uh, the same with uh, Ukraine war. Uh, things could have been solved 
peacefully and uh, without killings and without pushing anybody around and nothing like that. But hey, um, these guys over there wanted it that way. These guys uh, said, okay, I will do it. Anyway, friends, uh, I, I hope this will stop yesterday, but it will not stop. Israel will go all the way on this one. So I don't know what Hamas will do. I'm probably going to fight back or do whatever, but uh, Israel will uh, uh, implement its right of self-defense to the end, till the end. This time I think it's going to be... I feel for the civilians on both sides and for people who have to follow orders that they may not, uh, you know, I can't say it. Uh, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.